Several years ago, I was at an event in California. I love to travel and teach the Word of God at various places, but I'll be honest, sometimes I have a little bit of a fear that if I leave, something bad is going to happen. So a few years ago, the Lord challenged me to start praying some scriptures over my family while I was gone. And one of those scriptures is found in Psalm 91, and it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Well, after I had prayed that prayer over my family after I left, I got one of those phone calls that no mom ever wants to get. My oldest daughter, Taylor, had been in a really bad car accident. In fact, her car was completely totaled. And when my husband called to tell me that she had been in a car accident, he really didn't have many details. And so you can imagine being on the other side of the country from where we live in North Carolina. Fear began to overcome me. And I immediately remembered that passage in Psalm 91 and those verses that every single time I leave, I make sure I make a sacrifice to stop and pray over my family. And so I went back to those verses and I read them while I waited for that update. Well, Chris called me a little while later and Taylor was okay. Miraculously, she had survived this accident that had completely totaled her car. I called my friend Wendy who lives just down the road from us and I said, Wendy, I just need you to go and hug my daughter. <laughs> and so Wendy started to make her way here, but she passed the scene of the accident and she got out and Taylor's car was still there because we were waiting for it to be towed away. As she got out, she noticed right by the car door, there was a feather, a white feather. And Wendy texted me a picture and she said, just so you know, your girl was covered by the hand of God today. Wendy had no idea that I pray that passage over my family. I don't know how that feather got there. I would love to believe that it was an angel. It could have been a number of things. But in that moment, I know that God was showing me his faithfulness. He was showing me that I can trust him with the really hard and difficult things. I don't have a feather story for every hard circumstance that I've ever walked through. In fact, as you know, by this point, there have been times where I have prayed very specific prayers that God did not answer in the way that I had hoped. But I hold on to that promise and I hold on to that feather and I hold on to that moment and remember that God is faithful even when I can't tangibly touch it. You know, we are winding down this story of Noah, and we are seeing how his faithfulness has completely inspired us to take these small steps of obedience to help us live a life that, at the end of it, will be found faithful. Next week, I'm going to invite you to come and sit at the table with myself and some friends as we talk about the legacy that you're going to be leaving here on this earth. But for today, I want us to finish up and understand this last decision that we see Noah make in the scriptures to find the familiar faithfulness of God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 8. We're in verse 20, and this is what it says. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I never ever strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. It's so interesting to me that as soon as Noah exits the ark, as soon as God gives him permission to step out, the first thing that he does is he builds an altar and he offers a sacrifice to the Lord. 
At that point, he didn't have any other promises from God. He didn't have anything to hold on to, but he decided that he was going to make the sacrifice. And it says that the Lord was pleased with it. Now this word sacrifice, (laughs) this is not a word we like to talk about in this generation today. We want to find the easy way, the way that we can just step into the promise like that. We want that name it and claim it kind of mentality. But the reality is your faith and my faith, it is going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take sacrifice to walk with God. It's going to take sacrifice to listen to God. It's going to take sacrifice to rise above the doubt. It's going to take sacrifice to remember that God is in charge. And it's going to take sacrifice that even when we don't see it, to find the familiar faithfulness of God. Because see, after Noah made the sacrifice, then the promise comes. And we see God send that beautiful rainbow, that covenant, that sign that God would never flood the earth again. In Genesis 9, verse 12, this is what God said to Noah. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. That means you and I. I have set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember, remember that my covenant is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall never again become a flood and destroy all flesh. I love rainbows and we've had some incredible rainbows out here on the Fixer Burr Farm. And sometimes when I'm feeling discouraged and defeated, I just go back and look at those pictures and see those rainbows. But here's what I want us to do as we wrap this up today. I want you to start thinking about the sacrifice that God is asking you to make as we wind down this study. I think one of the most heartbreaking things for me as a Bible study teacher would be that I had presented you all of this content and we just closed our study guides and said, well, that was a nice little Bible study. I want you to be able to step fully into a life filled with promise, filled with the things of God, filled with a legacy that will last. And it's only going to come from the sacrifice that we are willing to make now. So make the sacrifice. The promise will come. The process in between them two, I don't know how long that's going to take. Only God knows that. But if we will stay faithful, the promise will come. All right, I can't wait to bring you back here next week as we sit at the table and I get to introduce you to some of the most important people in my life. And we begin to talk about what it's gonna be like for you to build a life based on faith, not on fear, to leave a legacy that will last.